Great. Uh, what we have so far is a script that checks if the current time is between these two times, and then it appends these four lines in the host's file. So we're talking about appending because this R plus mode there means that you can read and append text in your file. And you know that writing differs from appending in that when you write text in a file, uh, you are writing the text in the empty version of the file. So with write, you'd have only these four lines in your host's file and not the other ones. Uh, good, that makes sense. And and yeah, that's the first part of our conditional. And if that happens to be false, then we want to execute something here. And that would be to delete these four lines. Now, as you know from the previous lectures of file handling in this course, uh, there's no direct method to uh, just pass some, some lines as, as arguments or as input and then have a delete function that removes th those lines from, from a file. And that makes the situation a bit tricky. So our input here is this list with these names, with these items. Uh, which means what we can do is, uh, well, first logically you want to read this file and then check if these names are in here again, actually as we did in here, more or less. So, uh, let me start with that. With open hosts uh, temp, that's a fault path. And again here we are reading and appending uh, at the same time. So we want to use R plus there as file. And let's store uh, this text in a variable. Good. And yeah, this will load the text in our content variable as a single string. Um, so that's probably not the best solution. So the best solution would be to use read lines instead, which will produce a list uh, with all the lines in our host file. So for instance, this has 25 lines. Uh, we'll have a list with 25 items where each item uh, represents a string with each of these lines. So for instance, this will be the first string of the, of the list stored in the content variable. So content is now a list. Now that we have a list, we can start checking these items against the list that we have grabbed from the host file. So if these items are there, we want to delete them. But as I said, there is no direct way to, to delete these items. Uh, we have methods to write content, so we have methods to append content in, in, in that file, but not to delete. However, we can make use of the append method. We could start iterating through uh, these items uh, in the content list and check uh, if, if Facebook is in that particular item, so in the item string. If Facebook is there, then we ignore that line. And if Facebook is not there, we write that line in the host's file. So something like this. Uh, let's say we iterate through this and say Facebook is, is not there. So create a host file, like a new host file, uh, with this line there. And then go to the next line. If Facebook is not there, then add append this line uh, to that host file. So we'll have two lines and then three lines. And then we will remove the lines which contain Facebook. I know this sounds very confusing at the moment. Uh, but once I write the script and I explain uh, line by line, I'm sure you'll have that uh, moment when you say, aha. So you'll get that uh, once I write the, the lines here. So we're here, uh, we read the lines, but as you know, when, when you apply a read method there, like read lines or read, the pointer will be placed at the end, at the last line, so here. So we read the lines there, we have a list, and now we can say for mm, line in content. So we start looping through the content list. And here I'll use any method. So we want to check these items against the lines of content. 
and that would be uh, something like if not any website in line for website in website list file dot write so append the line so what I did here is uh, let me simplify that by talking about the first iteration only so we have this line here the first line copyright etc and uh, we are saying that if not any website so uh, any item which is still a variable in that line so in this line and so what is this website variable where uh, the website is uh, the first item of the website list uh, which would be this one here uh, but this will create a loop so it will check the first item there and it will compare it so against the, the first line so we are in the first loop and we say if not uh, www.facebook.com in that first line there then write that line in the file otherwise we wouldn't do anything and so that would check the, the first item of the list and that would go to the second item and check it against the first item of the host file the first line of the host file and then it will go to the third line and fourth line until this list is consumed so that's for the first line of the host file then it goes to the second line and performs exactly the same thing so it checks the four items of the, of the website list again against the second line of the host's file and uh, yeah i hope that makes sense and yeah i'll check what this does but uh now it's 20 past four Mm, so we are in the working hours and uh, uh, let me modify this uh, let's say 16 to 17 are our working hours so outside of this we want to remove this four lines which will be the case uh, it, when I run the script now uh, Python website blocker run fun hours is executed and two times I'll interrupt this and check what we got. So, uh, we have this block here. We have this block here, and then the block is repeated. So it's not exactly what we want. And uh, this ends, and then it's re it it repeats again, and it ends in here. And then it repeats uh, another time, so the loop, the while loop, ran three times. And the, the first block, so this one here, uh, was the block that we, we had already in the host file. And then what happened is that we opened this host file in read and append mode, and then we iterated through the lines of the host file, and then we said append only those lines where there's no Facebook or, or uh, this uh, mail.life in those lines and Python did just that so it appended those lines under the existing content and it did it uh, two times yeah so uh, sorry I said uh, the loop ran three times earlier uh, actually the loop, uh, the loop ran uh, two times but we had one existing block here so uh, the other two times uh, Python appended uh, this block again Great. Even though we are not there yet, I'm satisfied with the progress because I think you, you are now able to understand how things are working. And now we need to put our logic into a very active state in order to, to make this work. Mm, so there are no new things that you need to apply here. It is just tricks. So uh, you know about this truncate method. Uh, which what it does is it truncates, it deletes the content of the file from the current point and downwards. So for instance, if we apply that in here, what we would get is 
So think about the first iteration only. Uh, so the first iteration will add the first block after the existing block, uh, which is this one here. So this is uh, the first block with all the Facebook things. And then the truncate method, what it would do, it will delete everything that is under this, which is not exactly what we want because we would still have uh, these things above. So we need to figure out a way to put this block of code above this, above the existing one. And to solve that is by using file.seek. So you know that uh, when you read, when you apply a read method to your file, for instance here you apply the first read method, and the pointer will go here. So just after the last character of the file content. So when you apply a write method and append, uh, you, you append lines, uh, the lines will, will append after the pointer. Now, if you want to append these lines, as I said, if you want to append them before this existing block, you'd want to apply the seek method so that you, you replace the pointer, you place a pointer just before the first character of the file content. Uh, what that will do is, uh, you know, it will get all these lines, so cut it from there, just to illustrate it and it will place them in here. And then what the file truncate method will do is it will remove everything that is after that. And this as well. So we will end up with this uh, text, which is what we want. Good. I hope I explained that well. And uh, let me try that now. So it will delete this and these and this is the initial state of the host's file so we have these uh, facebook and hotmail uh, domains there so i'll save this and the script as well and i'll go ahead and execute hmm. so it seems to be working well yeah and if I change the hover, so uh, let me, or I'll do a soft wrap there. Okay, so that you see both the host file and the script. So now it's three to four, and uh, let me put this 15. So we are in the working hours and execute this. And the lines are there. Interrupt that, put this 16, and try again. And the lines are gone. Whew, so, uh, this is working. Again, just to wrap up, uh, what we did here is so we're, we're talking about the else section. And uh, we open the host file in read and append method. And then we store the lines in a content list. And that puts a pointer in here, which means that everything you do after that will be applied under these lines. But by applying the seek method there, we tell Python to put the pointer in here. Just here. And so then we iterate through this uh, content list in this line and check that if any of this uh, website list contents is in the current line of the content list, Actually, if it's not in the current line of the content list, then we write down that line in the host file. And then we truncate everything that goes under that line, which means we wrote all these 21 lines and everything that we had uh, down here, so which was the previous existing host text, that, co that content was truncated, so it was deleted from the file. And yes, uh, we're basically done. I mean, we still have some things to make this work, to, to be able to run this script as a Python process on the background, because at the moment, uh, the, the way we run this is by opening a command line 
and they're calling Python and they're pointing to website blocker.py. And also we need to implement one thing. So uh, at the moment we are accessing this fake host file, uh, but what we want to do instead is access the actual host file, which is here. So hosts and to do that, uh, you would first want to change host temp with host path. So host temp with host path. So where do we have host temp? Hosts. Mm, yeah, it's here. So host path there and here as well. Now that's about it. But if you try this. you get a permission error because you're running that as a normal user. Uh, what you want to do instead is run that as an administrator. On Linux or Mac, uh, that is straightforward. So you'd want to say sudo and then python and then point to website blocker.py. However, sudo doesn't work uh, with uh, Windows. Uh, so the workaround here is to open the command line from the terminal and right click and go run as administrator. Yes, and then you'd have to cd for change directory and then slash d, which means uh, I'm going to the D drive. So when you switch drives from C to D, you want to use this backslash D and that would be Dropbox. block websites and demo and then if I run the script now python and website blocker now it runs normally so we are doing the fun hours it's a 15 16 past 6 oh so yeah we, we are in the fun hours and if you check the script the hosts file uh, you'll see that you don't have any websites there being blocked. So uh, let me try this. Let me change this to 19 so that we fall inside the working hours. And run the script again so we get working hours there. And if I go and check the notepad now, this is saying this file has been modified by, no by another program, uh, which is Python. And do you want to reload it? Yes. And yeah, we have these four lines there. If I try Facebook now, I won't be able to access it. But be aware though that sometimes if you have your browser opened and you, you just block Facebook or another website in your host file, the browser may not reflect it immediately. So it may take some time so until the browser can uh, get the information from the host file. If you want to speed up that process, you may want to restart your browser, so close it and open up again, and then uh, check Facebook. And yeah, it should be the same for Hotmail as well. So it, it passes Hotmail, but then Hotmail, uh, their servers redirect you to this website which I'm blocking. And you cannot access that either. So this is working well, we're doing great and yeah, what's left now is to implement this program to run it in the background. So there's just a few minutes of video left for this section and we're done. So talk to you in the next lecture.